Our second tissue that we're going to discuss is connective tissue, CT, and it's on the pink sheet on the opposite side from the ET. So here are the general characteristics again for CT, um, how we can identify it on slides, characteristics, general things we can use um, to ID. But before I start that, I also want to point out another very important white page in your lab pack. It's page 16, and there's a table listing the nine specific types of CT. There are abbreviations, okay? Location in the body, general location. The name of the cell, what we call that specific cell in the CT. Then we go to um, the matrix type. What kind of matrix are the cells making? What kind of fibers are in the matrix? And then the functions, general functions for the uh, connective tissues, okay? So those are the nine specific ones, and I have them all drawn on the board, and we'll go over a lot of this information that's on this sheet, is on the board, and giving you reminders of what these cells look like on slides, histology slides because you really can't see it grossly with the eye in dissections. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you what CT is made out of. They have basic cells, basic cells, and basically CT cytoplasm will always stain pink or orangey color, light pink, light uh, orange basically. And the name of the cells are gonna be called fibroblast if they're a young one that can reproduce by mitosis. And then as they age, they become a fibrocyte. Can you actually see the difference on slides? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, okay? So the basic cell in all connective tissue is called a fibroblast. And fibroblasts basically are also known commonly as stem cells. Why? Because they are totipotent. This is a word that means they have the ability to change one time in their lifetime into any other kind of CT cell, or it can change into an ET cell, an MT cell, or an NT cell, any other kind of tissue. So that, that's why it's called totipotent and has that ability to change one time as a fibroblast, a young cell, to help damaged areas um, that might be under attack or um, broken or whatever. So fibroblasts, basically, uh, will then reproduce for a while, and then they stop reproducing, and then they become known as a fibrocyte. Now, all connective tissue cells make something called matrix. And this is the matrix, it's ooey gooey for the most part, but the matrix is different in every kind of CT. And so some have gel-like, some have liquid, some have oil, some have granules in it for um, light protection. And so this matrix comes out of the pores of the cell. So if you pretend these holes are the pores in the cell membrane, it's going to ooze out and the cells are going to sit in the matrix like this. It's sort of like gravy over the, the biscuits, right, like that. And so basically, the matrix is made by the organelles in the cells known as the RER, the SER, the Golgi, and just the plain old ribosomes add some protein to the matrix, right? So basically that's what the matrix is uh, made from or where it's made in those organelles. And also what's going to come out in the matrix are fibers. And so all, every kind, all nine kinds of CT, they all have collagen fibers embedded in them. And these are big protein fibers that are also made like in the RER and the ribosomes. And so these are gonna come out and man, they're gonna give a good support, okay? So all nine kinds have collagen fibers. Then the uh, smooth ER and also the, um, <clears throat> basically the Golgi, they can also help in making elastic fibers besides the RER and the uh, ribosomes. So basically these elastic fibers are gonna be in the matrix of all nine specific kinds of CT and they're gonna give it stretch and support and so it's called uh, being resilient and so when you have elastic in anything, that means it can stretch and being resilient, it will come back to its original shape. So you all have all these fibers embedded in the matrix, okay? 
Now, blood CT has a third fiber. They make a fiber to help clot the blood. And the fiber is called the fibrin fiber. So I made it red for blood. And so basically it's gonna be in here to form clots, okay? And then there's another type of um, CT and it's gonna make my purple fibers, my purple fibers. And it adds a third fiber in here for stretch and for stability, for strength. And this is in reticular CT and we call these reticular fibers. So there's sort of a combination between collagen and elastic fibers, right, essentially. So we have reticular fibers. And can you see these fibers in the matrix? Sometimes you can see them if you put special stains on the connective tissue, uh, but otherwise you can never see it. It just sort of blends in with the matrix, okay? So that's a little introduction into what are trying to get you to visualize what connective tissue is about on a slide right there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is connective tissue gets its name from, basically, it connects all the other tissues together to make the wall of an organ. So CT is gonna connect ET to MT, CT connects um, NT to MT, ET, and so it connects all areas of the body. So we have nine specific kinds of connective tissue and all connective tissue cytoplasm stains pink, light pink or light orange, okay? So that will be a general characteristic for all connective tissue. So now let's look at uh, basically the nine specific kinds of connective tissue and let's identify the matrix and the name of the cells and if they have anything special and all this information is on the table on page 16 in the lab pack. So here we go. So this is gonna be a lot like epithelial tissue. We're gonna look at cells, the shape of cells, the shape of the nucleus, um, basically how much matrix they're gonna make and anything else that's special about the connective tissue. So our first one on our chart right here is called loose CT, okay, loose CT. And loose CT has another name, but they don't use it very much anymore, but it was called a realer. So LCT is its abbreviation, loose CT. And why is it called loose? Because basically it has a high number of cells and not so much matrix. The matrix is actually very, very stringy, very stringy. And so here are the cells. I drew the cytoplasm in pink. They have a round nucleus. And basically we call these cells fibroblasts or fibrocytes. And there's lots and lots of capillaries, blood capillaries in here to pick up secretions. So to pick up uh, like endocrine secretions. Uh, basically your hormones will get loaded in here. And so lots of capillaries in here. And it also capillaries bring in food, oxygen, and then they'll pick up waste products and CO2. So loaded with capillaries, not so much matrix. The matrix is actually not much matrix, it's gel-like, it's like jelly. And so basically, it's gonna be this light orange stuff and it's very stringy, very stringy, um, not real thick at all. So where do you find loose CT? Usually around the gland adenomeres, around the end pieces. They're loaded with loose CT around them in the wall of many organs, okay? So our second kind is called dense regular CT. DRCT is its abbreviation, and it has lots of matrix. So when I draw an arrow up, it means high levels of matrix, not so many cells, okay? So the cells, here are the fibroblasts and the fibrocytes, and so they're very flat and dark um, cells, dark nucleus, and the cytoplasm stains a pinky color. The matrix will be a light pink to a light orange, and the reason we say it's dense is because it has so much matrix, so much matrix here. And so regular means it's all going the same direction. So when you say regular, everything looks like it's flowing downstream together, okay? And the matrix is gel-like, so it's like jelly, and so it's sort of soft, and it's gonna all go the same direction. 
So we're, what makes up dense regular CT? Well, basically your tendons, which attach muscles to bone, okay? All tendons and all ligaments, which um, ligaments are dense regular CT, which attach bone to bone or bone to cartilage. And so all tendons and ligaments in the human body are made out of dense regular CT. A lot of times I like to say, you should think of dense regular CT like a stretchy ACE bandage that you wrap when you have sprains and strains um, for support. So it's great for support, it's very tough, and so that's dense reg CT. Now going on to our next one, dense irregular CT. So dense irregular CT, the matrix is going to have no pattern. Matrix has no pattern. It goes every which way, every which way right here. And so basically the cells are scattered in there. And so they're called fibroblasts and fibrocytes. And how do we abbreviate dense irregular CT? D-I-R-C-T, okay? And so it has high matrix, lots of matrix, low cells, not many cells in it. And where do you find this? Oh, basically in the wall of all organs. Every organ has dense irregular in it. And basically it's for stretch and flexibility, right? Stretch and flex. And so that's why the, the uh, fibers and the matrix are going every which way. So it gives it lots of uh, ability to change directions. And then the next one is adipose CT, one of my favorites. It's abbreviated ACT. It's known as fat in the body. Fat, where do you find it? In the lower layer of the skin is one of the big places we have it, the hypodermis of the skin. And then we have fat pads all over around our organs, etc. And so fat cells are very large cells and they have a flat nucleus right here, a very flat nucleus. Um, the cells stain sort of pink, but they mainly look white. They look white because why? In the middle here, <clears throat> right here, in the middle of the cell right here is a big old hunk of fat. It stores fat. And so why do you want fat? For insulation, right? And so to retain body heat, it also stores food. And so this is a fat vacuole, fat vacuole. So I might put it and make it like darker green right here. And so right here, that's a fat vacuole. And you know what a vacuole is. It's just like a, a storage container. And so it's storing the fat in one big organelle right there, all right? And so they have a name for this one big fat vacuole, fat vac, right here. They call it unilocular. Unilocular means one big vacuole, unilocular. So another kind of fat we have in the body, this is actually called white fat, white fat. And so we have multilocular fat, which is called brown fat. Usually brown fat, we have some when we're um, uh, first born, but then it disappears. And basically brown fat is mainly in animals that hibernate. So they have lots of little um, bubbles of fat in here. They would have something like a bunch of little vacuoles, and that would be like brown fat right there. But we just have the white fat uh, for the rest of our life, exactly. And having one big fat vacuole is very hard to break down that fat once you fill that cell with so much fat. And another interesting fact about adipose CT is that basically, uh, by the time you're done growing, adding height, then basically all your fat pads, your fat cells are in place in the body and you'll never ever really lose them. Yes, they do die, but if you get overweight, then they just stretch. And then when you lose weight, the vacuole shrinks. And so the only way you can really get rid of fat is like liposuction, right? And so uh, basically that's called white fat. So hypodermis of the skin. Now, do we have a special name for the fat cells? Yes. They're called adipoblasts or adipocytes, named after adipose, which always means fat, 
all right? So now going on, oh, and I forgot the oily matrix. What kind of matrix oozes out of these cells? It's oil or grease, oil or grease, because when you touch fat, you will see that you've got oil or grease on your hands, definitely. So it has an oily type matrix. All right, the next one is called blood CT. Okay, blood CT over here. And so it's abbreviation BCT. And all of the blood cells are called collectively hemo or hematoblast or sites. So hemo or hemato always means blood, okay? And so blast means it's a young cell, can reproduce, sites are the older version of it. And so basically we have three groups of blood cells, specific groups of blood cells, which most of you have heard about. And so basically the cells, instead of calling them fibroblasts or hematoblasts, these are called erythrocytes, common name, red blood cell, common name, but erythrocyte is the big term. And what do they do? They carry oxygen and CO2. They have no nucleus. Their cytoplasm is red, very reddish pink, and the matrix in blood is called plasma. It's a liquid, right? And so usually the plasma is like yellowy on a slide, yellowy orange, and so very hard to see. But basically, this is the first specific type of blood cell called erythrocyte. Our second specific type of blood cell is called a leukocyte, and they generally fight infections for us, okay? Those are commonly known as white blood cells. They have a purple nucleus. They sort of have different colors of cytoplasm. Um, it can be yellow, it could be red, it could be purple, okay? So basically thrombocytes, they'll have different colors for their cytoplasm depending upon what they have in them and what they're doing what they're fighting and so but basically always id them with a the nucleus sort of a purpley uh, shade of uh, cytoplasm and then of course um, basically here's the plasma the orange plasma right there and our third type of cell is the smallest cell in the human body it's called the thrombocyte common name platelet and it has only one function to clot your blood. And these are little bitty pieces. They look like just solid pieces of purple. They look like dirt on a slide. And here's the plasma. So where do you find blood? You find blood in all your BVs, blood vessels, okay? Arteries, veins, capillaries, right. So now there's one more thing that's special about your blood. Besides having collagen and elastic fibers in the plasma, they also have a third fiber, a third fiber here, and I made it black right here, black. And that third fiber is called fibrin. Fibrin, it was red in my example at the beginning, but fibrin clots your blood. It makes clots so you don't bleed to death, okay? And now going on to the next type, we've got bone CT, good old bone CT. And you abbreviate it just bone and then CT. All right, because blood CT is BCT. So you could get that confused, BCT versus BCT. So we usually just write out bone because it's a shorter word. So bone cells are called osteoblasts or osteocytes. And they're very strange looking cells. They almost look like a spider. Um, they look very dark black, very dark black. And then they have these cell membrane extensions so that they can get food right from the blood vessels. And so these cell membrane extensions are called canaliculi, right here. Canaliculi is how you pronounce that. And they're very easy to see on a slide. They almost look like spider legs coming out. And so each one of these cell membrane extensions are called canaliculi. So can you tell the difference between an osteoblast and an osteocyte? No, no way. And so basically, uh, they're going to be a very easy to identify. The matrix um, stains, usually a yellowy color, light orange, but basically the matrix is so hard, it's hard to get stain in there to stain it. So the matrix is called mineralized because it's hard with a lot of calcium and a lot of other elements or salts. Okay, so we'll talk about that later when we get to the skeletal system. 
All right, and so that's number six, uh, bow CT, specific type. And then we have reticular CT down below it. Reticular CT is found in all lymph nodes, and it's got a third fiber in its, cell, uh, in its plasma out here. And here's some cells in here, the cells. And the cells just sort of blend in with the matrix. Very hard to see the cells. They're a peachy color, peachy color with a purple nucleus. And then this is all the matrix out here. And they have a third fiber. So I put another black fiber in here, another black fiber. The third fiber is called reticular fiber, and it's uh, great for stretch and flexibility. So our lymph nodes do swell when they're active, and so this helps support the lymph node itself when you have all this kind of CT in there. So the matrix is very peachy color. The cells are peachy color. Hard to see the cells. And what do we call the cells? Reticuloblast or sites. So we name it after the fiber. Reticuloblast or sites are the names of these cells in this kind of connective tissue. All right, so we're going on, and then we've only got two left here. Number eight is cartilage CT, okay? Cartilage CT, and we abbreviate it CART CT, okay? And where do you find it? Of course, in the skeletal system for shock absorption. Does it do other things like make the tip of your nose, make the cartilage in your ear for support? Of course, but basically, we're just saying for right now, in the skeletal system for shock absorption, because it's at the ends of all movable bones. You have cartilage pads. So cartilage cells are called chondro, chondroblast and chondrocytes. And so chondroblast and sites, and you can tell the difference between a young one and an old one. And so the young ones are right here, and they have a nice purple nucleus, easy to see. They're usually a light pink color. The matrix is really thick, okay? Uh, and it's soft, and the matrix actually <clears throat> has holes in it because when these cells become old, chondrocytes, chondrocytes, they shrivel up and die, and they like create their own little grave. They scoop out the matrix, and they leave a hole right here, a hole where they used to live in the matrix. And so the chondrocytes, um, they're really cool how they just shrivel up and they leave this hole. So do we have a name for the hole where the chondrocyte used to live? Of course we do. And it's called lacuni, lacuni. So basically bone has canaliculi and cartilage has lacuni. And it almost sounds like two Hawaiian words, right? Absolutely. So that's cartilage CT right there. And what kind of fibers would be in here? Just collagen and elastic. So only blood and reticular have the third fiber. And our last type of CT is called pigmented CT, okay? Pigmented CT, it's in the iris of the eye. It gives your eye color. And so basically, it has pigment granules, protein granules out here in the matrix. The gel, it's a gel-like matrix, and it's got these brown granules. And what do we call the brown granules in your eye in this connective tissue? We call it chromatin granules, chromatin, and what does it do? It's going to deflect light rays. So when light is trying to get into your pupil, it also hits the iris area, and then the light will just bounce off like sunglasses, right? So that's the chromatin in the gel-like matrix right there. So what do we call these cells that are actually making the chromatin out in here in the matrix? We call them chromato, chromatoblasts or chromatocytes is the name for the cells, okay? And that's how we'll ID these. Now we will actually not see a slide on this, um, but basically you can just look at the iris of your eye and you can see the color, and your color is based on how much chromatin you actually have in your um, connective tissue under your uh, ET, right? So those are nine specific types of ET. They're all listed on this white sheet in the lab pack, page 16. And so now we're gonna go back and we're gonna talk about ways to ID, criteria mm. to ID, criteria to ID, um, all the connective tissue right here, okay? 
And so we've already done this with ET. First of all, you can look at matrix always stains acidophilic. So you can look at the color of the matrix. That's one way you can ID all these. Second way, um, basically you can always find CT under ET. That's the easy way to find it. Shape of the cells, overall shape of the cells. Pa patterns to the cells. What kind of patterns are in here? Like dense irregular versus dense regular. These look like little fish all swimming the same way. Okay, so pattern to the cells. How much matrix you have? How much matrix you have between the cells? So loose CT is the least. It's very stringy. Dense regular CT, very thick. The ace bandage, very thick. All right. And then the pattern to the matrix. What kind of pattern does it have? If it has any. All right. So those are the things we can use to basically classify the different types of CT. Now, on the top, we have general characteristics, basically, for all these nine types of CT, okay? And so basically, I'm gonna go over these real quick-like, and then you can read and study them later, of course. So number one, the basic cell, we already said, is a fibroblast, the young cell, that turns into a fibroblast site. And then, basically, number two, all fibroblasts and site make matrix, okay? And it's made in the RER and the Golgi and the SER. Three, the matrix always has two fibers in it, collagen and elastic. Four, matrix stains acidophilic, pinky or orangey, light orange. Five, CT cells have lots of space between them. Oh my gosh, lots of space. Blood vessels and nerves can be in that matrix, and so they're spaced out. They're not like ET, okay? All right, and so seven, always found under ET, true statement. Eight, connective tissue connects all the tissues in the wall of an organ, all right? Nine, the fibroblasts and fibrocytes can be renamed for specific ones. So instead of saying the uh, fibroblasts of adipose CT, that's a lot of words. So we just call these adipoblasts or adipocytes chondroblast or chondrocytes, osteoblast, osteocytes, and the three general um, terms for blood cells, okay? Okay, I already told you oh, that CT is totipotent, has the ability to change one time in its lifetime as a fibroblast into any other tissue type cell or into any other kind of CT cell, right? And then also CT takes the longest to die. It is the toughest tissue ever. And so basically nerve tissue dies the fastest with a lack of oxygen in three to five seconds. You can wipe out almost a million neurons, right? And so good thing you have a gazillion of them, but I'm just saying, CT, very tough, dies slowly with low levels of oxygen, right? And then uh, embryonic CT is called mesenchyme or um, also I drew a picture on the board with um, connective tissue uh, saying that the uh, CT comes from the mesoderm. So mesenchyme just means embryonic CT. So there you go. Those are the general things about CT, how to identify it, and hopefully this will help you uh, uh, remember it from your slides.